Hi students, today's topic is Surveillance of Drinking Water Quality. I am Dr. Karthikeyan. Welcome to our channel, Community Medicine Made Easy. Surveillance of drinking water is an important 5 mark question for you. There are 5 important points here. Surveillance of drinking water quality to protect the public from waterborne diseases. So there are 5 points. The first point is Sanitary Survey. This is sanitary survey. A qualified person is inspecting the water supply system right from its origin till the distribution to the household level to detect any difficulties or faults and to correct rectification measures. Second one is sampling which is done here. See this is the most important core part of uh, water testing. So the sample you are collecting, the water that should be tested, should be collected in a proper way. There is a proper standard operating protocol to collect. See the person is wearing gloves, mask, everything like a surgery. WHO guidelines for drinking water quality is a book that gives you standards. Another book is by ICMR which is manual of standards for quality of drinking water. So either WHO manual or ICMR manual should be consulted for proper sampling of water. Third one is bacteriological surveillance. You have collected the water. Now it should be tested in the lab. In lab there are three tests by which we will test the bacteriological quality of water. First one is presumptive coliform test. This test is based on MPN most probable number that is the sample is taken and there are test tubes which contain McConkey lactose bile salt broth that is there in all these test tubes. Bromcresol purple is the indicator of fermentation used here. So we will take the sample water 0.1 ml is inoculated in the first five test tubes. So we will take the sample water from here. 0.1 ml is inoculated in the first 5 test tubes, 1 ml is inoculated in the second 5 test tubes, 10 ml is inoculated in the third 5 test tubes and 50 ml is inoculated like this it goes and the, what we will see is fermentation. If the fermentation is shown here in the first set or in the second set or in the third set after 48 hours of incubation then we say the most probable number of coliform organisms per 100 ml based on this multiple tube method. This is the first thing. It gives only an indication of presence of coliform organisms. It can be due to other organisms also. So that's why we have to go to the next step that is confirmation of coliform organism. The confirmatory test is subculturing the positive tubes from the multiple tube method. You will subculture in a BGLB, brilliant green bile broth. So in this broth, it will be subcultured for up to 48 hours at 44 degrees Celsius. If you see gas after 48 hours at 44 degrees Celsius, then E. coli is the only organism that can produce gas from lactose at 44 degrees Celsius. So you can confirm the presence of coliform organism by brilliant green bile broth subculturing. So we have confirmed by BGBL broth. Now there is another uh, presumptive coliform test that is membrane filtration technique. In membrane filtration technique, the water is filtered through a membrane. This membrane is made up of cellulose ester. So when you filter the water, all the bacteria will be retained on this membrane. Take this membrane and keep it face upwards and inoculate in a suitable culture medium. When you do that, you can see the culture medium, the colonies, the coliform bacteria will form colonies, metallic green sheen colonies. You can actually count the number of colonies based on which we can say how much coliform is contaminated in the water. So this is membrane filtration technique. The second thing is deduction of fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens. If you say fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens, then without any doubt we can say there is fecal contamination of uh, water because fecal streptococci and clostridium perfringens will be only there in feces. So this is the second test. Now the third test is colony count. This is the third bacteriological test. Plate method is used here. Just in yeast extract agar, we have to pour the water and you have to see for the colonies in 22 degrees Celsius after 24 hours of incubation, after 48 hours, after 7 days. Like this timeline varies. Generally, this is for maintenance purpose. When there is sudden increase in a colony count in this plate, then we can say that there is some real contamination of water. You can detect real contamination early when you use the plate method for colony count. So, uh, sanitary survey over, sampling over, bacteriological surveillance over. Now, we have to go for biological examination. In biological examination, generally in water, drinking water especially, you should not see fungi, yeast, 
crustaceans, protozoa, rotifers, minute worms. These are all collectively called as planktons. Ideally, there should not be any plankton in water. If there is plankton in water, it is an index of pollution of water. The last one is chemical surveillance of water, complete analysis of water. Analysis of chemicals include the pH, color, turbidity, chloride, ammonia, chlorine demand, residual chlorine. These are all basic tests for chemical surveillance of water. But if you want to do in-depth surveillance, you should also check for toxic metals, pesticides, persistent organic chemicals and radioactivity in water. So these are the chemical surveillance points. So now you understood very clearly the surveillance of drinking water. A. Sanitary survey. B. Sampling. C. Bacteriological surveillance. Presentive coliform test. Multiple tube method. Membrane filtration technique. Then detection of fecal streptococci and Clostridium perfringens. Then colony count. Then uh, D. Biological examination. E. Chemical surveillance. I hope this video was useful for you. If you like this video, press the like button. If you want to watch more such videos, you can become the member of this channel. Community medicine made easy. Meet you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye from Dr. Karthagain. Thank you so much.